Greetings adventurous travelers and fellow keepers of the lake. Welcome to the last video in the playlist about uh, reading divination cards in TTRPGs. This video is all about reading the cards. So improvisation techniques and methods that you would employ to actually like create a believable fortune teller and a believable prophecy, let's say. So let's jump straight into the nitty gritty details and yeah, roll the intro. Right, so as a DM, you might encounter uh, a situation where your players are getting a reading or some of your players is a reader of the cards, for example, a cartomancer, or a harrower, a taroka master, whatever. And yeah, uh, first of all, let's let's just make something clear. You can always just use your intuition, uh, your DM brain and just leave holes, be vague, uh, focus on some things, make connections. You're a creative person. I'm, I'm sure you will, uh, like, when you look at the cards, you will have something uh, spring to your mind. Also, if your player is using cards as their main technique of like delivering spells or like um, getting buffs or something let the player improvise let them do the the talking when they are making the reading you don't have to make it uh, happen you can always write it down and then just make it happen down the line like in 10 sessions after wow that reading was actually true and also what we did is when I played the cartomancer my DM told me that each in-game morning I would be drawing a card he would actually like shuffle my cards and place the card there is some sort of foreshadowing as the first card or one of the first three cards so I would be drawing those cards each morning uh, in game and I would see one of those cards that he intended it's a cool trick you spend your disbelief when you're handing the deck out of the game and then in game you're like being surprised with what you've uh, drawn yeah uh, we can end it here <laughs> as far as I'm concerned like the, the answer really is just improvise and and try to listen to your instincts and it will be it will be good enough for most people but if you are one of the people that want to dive deep into the matter, well, I have something excellent for you. I was uh, recommended the channel Ben Bulven. I also mentioned her channel in the first video. Basically, that channel inspired me to make all of this. So she uh, was talking about something called the critical theory, where it is basically a way to categorize types of card readings and what people employ while reading well, mostly tarot, but also other divination decks. So I have pulled major influences from there and tried to like by it up and make it something that's compatible with the games we play. These techniques can also be used if you're making different kinds of readers. So if your world is heavily populated with fortune tellers or your every town of yours has a fortune teller of their own, uh, you would maybe use different kinds of uh, reading techniques to make a distinction. The first technique is, well, I call it cultural based reading, which basically uh, pulls the inspiration from the vibe of the deck that I was talking about in the first video. And also like uh, you take into account when the deck was created, what was its purpose? Uh, what was the intention of the creator of the deck for each of the cards? Mostly you will find this intention in the official description, what the cards mean. It's kind of hard to memorize all the cards, especially if you have like 54 up to 78 cards. So you would be also carrying a cheat sheet or something and interpreting through that. Those descriptions are kind of vague, so you could still get like uh, a lot of holes that you can fill as a DM later on. And what is interesting here is that if you have uh, this type of reading, you can also expand it to uh, what Benable Van called uh, cultural materialist reading, which is basically the cards have some form of meaning now as well. Like maybe the, the meaning of the cards was skewed by the cultural impact of the present moments. Imagine Imagine getting a prophecy that was like 2000 years ago and it was written in some form of a manual or something and it is analyzed and read in one way but then you encounter a fortune teller that's doing the reading of the same spread of cards and they're giving a completely different type of reading based on the cultural change that happened from then to now and that might give your players some insight about the world like the history of the world and how things were laid out in that time another thing that I would also call some form of a cultural uh, reading 
like the third technique is basically looking at like the social status of the symbols on the cards so if you have the king or the queen or the peasant uh, you would look at like what is the cultural impact of those concepts for example a king is the most powerful man in one kingdom but in a kingdom that where the king is basically just a puppet run by the thieves guild well the thief is the card that has the most power right so let's recap in these cultural readings you have the traditional reading which is basically just memorizing the cards thinking about the vibe the true intention of the creator of the deck you have the materialist reading which is how we perceive uh, the cards through some cultural and social symbols today or in some other time and for the third one we just focus on the social status and look how these cards are portrayed in the social hierarchy of the of the society Formalist reading focuses on only what's on the cards. You look at the picture uh, on the card, what is in, in front of the picture, in the foreground, what is in the background. Uh, maybe something in the foreground is more important than a symbol in the background. We focus on what we are seeing, the color theory, the, the shapes, uh, is something spiky or round? Uh, is it like pouring water or, or, or lava, for example? We focus on what is on the card. So just limit yourself to the borders of the card and look at that. Interpret the symbols however you want. In this type of reading, you can maybe be expand to other cards in the spread so like see if something is flowing from one card to the other or or something like that and in terms of spells for these readings like for the cultural reading you would probably have some people that are not spellcasters uh, do these readings and they are maybe more grounded maybe for some lower fantasy settings or something like that for the formalist reading I would be uh, still like comfortable introducing some elements of like interpretation through well maybe some low level magic maybe cantrip magic and some school that are tied to that, but I wouldn't go that much into the magical and otherworldly. The next one is another uh, grouping that I would call more metaphysical or magical grouping where you have something that's in, in critical theory, it's called post-structuralist reading. You're not looking at the cards on their own, you're looking at the symbols on the cards, but you're tying them to a lot of like metaphysical, uh, astrological concepts, maybe tying them to schools of magic. Is there a spell or a school of spells that is in, in your world tied to a certain symbol? Maybe a chalice with red vine is tied to blood magic. Maybe it's tied to fire magic who knows so you might see a chalice with uh, like a red uh, liquid inside and say oh yeah this is totally destruction school of magic evocation or something whatever you can you can homebrew this stuff basically you're trying to reach uh, beyond those sensory perceptible properties of the card be sure to be consistent once you rule it like this for this uh, reader make sure that you always refer to these symbols in the same way this is where you can encompass much more magical things theories about existence uh, maybe what, what is your pantheon in in the world what is what is the mythos of your world so so just like pull from all these things some are maybe legitimate magical things that happen in the world but some things are maybe just like legends and, and things that people believe and some are maybe superstition but still like people that are reading the cards for them even those superstitious beliefs are are legit beliefs so so take that into account I would still like go with uh, medium to to high level casters easily uh, working with these types of readings but if you really want to go wild having a fortune teller that's maybe a witch or some uh, like half divine being or a hag from Feywild or beings from other planes or very high level casters you can always go with psychic reading and psychic reading I would still put it in this like uh, metaphysical uh, magical box of readings psychic reading is where you are not tied to one certain thing you're tied to your intuition you go beyond you will receive information from the divine from uh, like telepathically maybe there's a, a little gnome from Feywild telepathically transmitting information to that reader and he thinks he is um, doing psychic readings but <laughs> he's actually receiving information from the gnome I mean when I say uh, high level readers uh, I mean like high level spellcasters, high level characters in general, uh, the, the type of character that is much more familiar with the divine and uh, arcane. And uh, even like if you have maybe a reader in Call of Cthulhu, maybe a reader that's much more uh, familiar with the, the Cthulhu mythos. I would say these readers uh, would have a nice flair if you would say that they have less chance to be wrong. So maybe look at them more as prophets than, than just readers. So yeah, that's that's psychic reading. The next one is 
Readers Who Lie. And this is not from the critical theory. This is my edition. Uh, readers Who Lie. Uh, you would have like char charlatans, uh, people that are just scammers and they take some money. And if you're a DM that's interested in pouring time into something like this, you would basically go and research Burnham effect a bit. I mentioned it in the first video. There is a link uh, there. I will put it here as well. So yeah, have liars. Maybe I'm even lying to you right now. I mean, I'm talking about fictional card reading. So yeah, everything is uh, a lie if you look at, look at it deep enough. Another form of reading is maybe having the deck read itself. How would you do that? Well, dropping cards. I mentioned something like this in the Taroka video. What if you are carrying a deck? Maybe it's a regular deck. It's not non magical and you are carrying it in your pocket. When you're taking out some stuff, one of the cards falls out. Maybe this card is intentionally there. Maybe it has a certain meaning. In my Taroka video, I said that uh, for some cultures, this type of exposure of the card is considered like the most divine and, and the most powerful. So, uh, I don't know, maybe it's your way of foreshadowing some danger to the players. One thing that came to my mind is if you have a player that's using these cards or a reader that's uh, mostly with, with the players, take one card that will always represent your uh, player character. And this card is used for communicating maybe deeper things related to them. So, for example, a card with a picture of an old man on it, on top of your player's card, uh, those two cards together represent that player's father, for example. You can experiment in combining cards and their meanings like this, and also like communicate to them that they have their own cards so that when that card comes out, their attention peaks. Let's wrap up with uh, talking about customizing the readers. So uh, for each culture, for each reader, you could choose one of these techniques and say this is the technique for that reader. Then to add on top of that, a lot of uh, readers in the real world have some form of a charm or they put rocks or candles around the, the cards. They have some form of like divine focus uh, type of like object. And this can really vary from culture to culture. So think about the scenery of the reader. Uh, maybe Maybe your reader has like a little package that they bring with them and every time they do a reading they have to like unpack everything and create their little shrine to do the reading. Some might just need like their lucky charm to be around their neck or something. Also a lot of readers in the real world have their own mantras. Looking at these mantras we can like divide the, the reasoning uh, behind them into two different uh, schools of thought. One is that they fend off uh, negative spirits. So you're kind of protecting yourself as a reader from all the all the negative impact. But you can also look at it from the perspective of people having a bias towards negative things as that's what people are most interested in. When you go and get a reading, you're interested in like, what are the hardships that I will face? So the reader might be uh, psychologically inclined to go into the bad first and this type of mantra is here to remind you that you should stay clean of biases when you're doing the reading even when you're doing it for yourself we should now consult the deck of hero so yeah those are the things uh think about the technique of the reader the environment and the the divine focus the the, the lucky charm and think about the mantra so yeah we will be wrapping it up here i just wanted to cram as much information as i can into this video give you a lot of resources be the wind into your back and and uh, lead the way into the rabbit hole where you can explore on your own and maybe find out that the next session you're playing there will be a very interesting and very complex fortune teller for your players to interact with. Also there is a ton of things that I'm working on but my time is very limited so if you want to support me of course subscribe and share this and if you really want to like give me even more support and be a harness for all the the creative things that I have cooking in my mind for that there is the Ko-Fi link. Still kind of awkward to say but yeah <laughs> I have to. And uh, to wrap this up, I would really like to thank some of the people and their undying support. And those are my players that were on this roller coaster of TTRPG exploration from the beginning up until now, every Sunday, through the good and the bad, through 
the slog and the action. Thank you so much for, for staying uh, and playing with me. Also, I would like to thank my first Dungeon Master, M. You know who you are. I hope you're watching these and disagreeing with me on a lot of things, because that's where we get the greatest discussions from. And I would also like to thank a fellow YouTuber, House DM. Brother, you have helped me understand where the meat and potatoes of this hobby really is. And without you, I would never start thinking about all these mechanical things and, and like uh, theories surrounding our hobby. All the cool homebrew stuff that you can actually do with this. All the customization, the thinking beyond the rules, all that stuff. You open the floodgates and I'm internally grateful. That would be it for another video. Thank you so much for watching, fellow stranger from the internet. And as always, keep on going, keep on loving, play more D&D, stay creative, and I will see you in the next one.